Yesterday, we talked about the phenomenon of the growth of Pentecostalism worldwide, which is the fastest growing societal, religious, or economic, or political thing in the world. Today, we want to tie that back and show how that comes out of the Reformation and also talk some more about its rapid growth and what is causing this. So stay tuned. Welcome to All Things Apostolic. I'm Nathaniel Wilson, and I'm glad that you're with us today. Yesterday, we talked about the growth of Pentecostalism. In fact, from the first of the week, we've been talking about the growth of Pentecostalism. I have some more facts and research figures for you today and some other things to, to speak about. But the, uh, the main question, of course, we would ask, because we are Pentecostal, is have you received your Pentecostal experience? And uh, it, it, it seems like it would be pretty difficult to continue to contend that no one can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking with other tongues like they received it in the Bible, in the book of Acts, on the birthday of the church, where it was preached about by the man given the keys by Jesus himself. So I have to gently ask, do any of us think that we have had the keys given to us in the same precedential way that Peter had the keys given to him. So I think we would all say, no, he was first. And so uh, hermeneutically, we all know that first means something. So anyway, now when we see the outpouring of the spirit that is flowing across the world, we do not see any uh, big overt demonic negatives as a result of that, but we do see many positives of transformative action in people's lives by the Holy Spirit itself, then why would we contend to continue to say that it is something less when these people are the most energetic worshipers um, and, uh, and are devoted adherents to Jesus Christ? So these are sobering things to think about. So we're not saying this today to fuss with anyone. Um, you know, I, I thank God for every ounce of revelation that anybody has about Jesus Christ. But I would say you need to take another look if you've been taught or if you're teaching that you cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that uh, that is simply not true. And it's being, it's being shown to be not true uh, every day with thousands of people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit around the world. And um, this is an incredible phenomenon. There is nothing else like this. This is not some Pentecostal person on a little stump here talking about how great it is. This is me telling you the facts of the, uh, of the situation that we're involved in. And so uh, I mentioned that there was a report um, yesterday, that report that I read yesterday was given in 2016, uh, I believe, and um, it was a report that estimated that out of the 7 billion people in the world now pushing 8 billion, at that time, 707 million people were calculated to have uh, been recipients of spirit infilling in a Pentecostal fashion as found in Acts 2, 1 through 4. And um, there are now there's other estimates uh, about this. <clears throat> um, the Pew Center did a study in 2011, which was earlier, in which they estimated that there was 584 million uh, Pentecostals in the world. There was also uh, Christianity Today did a study in when was it? 2020, in which they estimated that 644 million have, are, are filled with the Spirit, are Pentecostal. Um, so when you calculate all of this out, you would, you have about, the, the estimate is there's about 2 billion Christians in the world of any kind. Uh, they're just 2 billion. Out of that, one-fourth of those now 
over one-fourth of those would be Pentecostal. And I read some older statistics to you yesterday that um, since 1970, that Pentecostalism has been growing by 8% a year. Now, the world population has averaged 1.2% a year. And, um, and all other, most all other religious groups have averaged uh, all of them. The most, I think, was 1.8%. If you're an atheist, you need to really start proselyting because uh, at that time it was only 0.25% of the world that was uh, growing per year that claimed to be atheist. So you really got to get on your horse there and get after that, uh, get after that proselyting deal to get some of these people to follow what you're teaching. So um, the truth is, is that... Um, there's close to one in 10 people in the world that are Pentecostal. Now, the Pentecostal experience identified as the Pentecostal experience as only since 1906. And so that is now what, uh, 117 years that this has been happening and that is identified. Now, before that, there's been in fact, you can go back through history and find outpourings of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues uh, throughout history since the inception of the church because it is normative in New Testament Christianity for this to take place. So now it's estimated right now, somebody did this estimate. Uh, I could find it for you if you want it documented. Um, there are 30 5,000 people every day right now receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues or attesting that they are Pentecostal. 35,000, not a week, not a month, but a day. And so I don't know what that calculates out to just quickly in my mind. I tried to calculate it. It seems to me like it's about 12 million, but in a year, but whatever it is, it is growing rapidly. And since 1970, here's the astounding figure. It has not slowed down. It is continuing. And if anything, it is accelerating. You can go back and look at the history, uh, which I did. It's been several years back now. But um, uh, the history of the continent of Africa was... Uh, less than 1% Christian in 1900. Think about that. Less than 1% Christian in 1900. Uh, and today, it's, it's, it's overwhelmed with, with millions and millions and millions of Christians, and most of them being Pentecostals, and those who are not are, are, are being converted to being Pentecostals. And I personally have friends that are going there that are baptizing hundreds and thousands of people uh, in Christ's name. And these people either have already received the Holy Spirit or they are receiving the Holy Spirit. This is taking place not only there. It's taking place in India. It's taking place in Japan. It's taking place in China. It's taking place in Korea. And uh, all of these people that uh, are not identified by the name Pentecostal, but they are receiving the Pentecostal experience. And, and North uh, uh, and South America. So <clears throat> while this is going on, um, uh, they tell us right now that one is being baptized, uh, somebody's being baptized every three seconds, every three seconds, one, two, three. Another one just got baptized, one, two, three, another one just, so, so um, this is uh, s something certainly remarkable. The reason I'm emphasizing this is that it should not be overlooked. Something of this magnitude that is a spiritual encounter with Christ. And uh, there are large churches. There's, there's one church in Nigeria. Uh, the church seats 100,000. And uh, on a typical Sunday, they will have as many as 500,000 come to church 
uh, for service. So uh, this is just some of the things that are happening. Now, this is not only happening in uh, foreign nations to America. It's not only happening in Africa on the continent there or in South America or in Asia or wherever. This is also happening in America. If you just stop and think about what I'm about to say, it's pretty remarkable because you're hearing all the voices saying that church attendance is declining. Maybe it is. I don't know. You also will hear um, of churches that are shutting down, and it's true. They are. There, are. there are denominations that have been large denominations who are shutting down churches. They can't get pastors in some cases, and they don't. the attendance is gone. People aren't going to church there. It's just almost an empty building. And so they're selling the buildings. And I have friends that I know that are buying some of these buildings because their churches are growing so rapidly. But in 2018, more American people right here in America, more American people reported being born again than any time since 1972. So that means in about almost 15, in almost 50 years, um, or is it more than 50 years, whatever, in almost 50 years, a little less than 50 years, there are more people in America reporting being born again than there were in 1972. And at the same time, though, the population of evangelicals, that would be Protestants, they're not Catholic, they're Protestants, but they are non-Pentecostal, has been declining and continues to decline. Now, this is sobering. We're not saying this to uh, get in some kind of uh, looking at anybody condescendingly or, or looking at anybody in an argument. We're just saying, are you looking at this? Are you seeing this? And um, I, I might just stop to say, if you're one of those who has decided that um, uh, you're just going to be set, your feet are just set in stone that People cannot receive the Holy Spirit, and anybody that does, there must be something a little wrong with them. Well, you're just flat out wrong, and you're being ridiculous. You need to stop. You need to look around at what's happening and say, well, what about me? Could this happen to me? And you say, well, I don't want it to happen to me. Well, it's a gift. Right after they received this gift, and it's identified as the gift that they received, Acts 2, 1 through 4, he says that the the promise, the gift of the Holy Ghost is for you. And so why wouldn't we want a gift from God? I mean, I'm not arguing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You quit being so bullheaded <laughs> and start accepting the fact that this is happening, whether you like it or not, and quit trying to discount it and act like it's not real. I mean, it's the most real thing in the world. And without that, your whole missions of Christianity today would be going down the tubes. Because the thing that's driving it, and everybody knows it that's in missiology, the thing that's driving Christian missions today is Pentecostalism. It's driving. It's the driving force. And it's transforming lives. And Jesus said, you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. So if it's bearing the fruit of love and joy and peace, if it's bearing the fruit of consciousness of their neighbor and of love for their neighbor and attempt to help them with with the gospel in whatever other way they can, uh, well, that's the fruit that it's bearing. And we look around the world, and it is a powerful thing. So this, uh, the, the Holy Ghost, even the way we have church, the way we worship God is a, is a powerful thing. So we're going to look a little uh, deeper at this. We, we've looked at the fact that if you go if you go back to the early church and then you see the dark ages and then you see in around 1500 that the Reformation begins, um, with little difficulty, a sequence of spiritual and biblical discovery can be traced through these successive groups from the 1500s, ever enlarging on previously revealed truths. 
and the power of the preached word to affect change is evident in every period. These preachers were thundering into a spiritually parched world of Reformation beginnings. These people didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost, many of them, most of them. And such preaching resounded like the boom of cannons, breaking centuries-old strongholds of institutional paralysis and false doctrine. And these uh, presently living today can hardly appreciate the milieu of the world past in which these people were caught. Each succeeding forward movement of the Reformation cr uh, uh, crashed mightily against existing spiritual strongholds and fortifications which had bound men and women in spiritual darkness for centuries, thus bringing a whole stunning new level of freedoms, not only to individuals, but to the world itself. So this is a little interruption to this uh, session of All Things Apostolic, because I am talking about the growth of Pentecostalism around the world, okay? Well, that includes America. Now, there was a time when they were saying Pentecostalism is growing around the world, but not in America. But in my circle, the people that I run with, the orbit of Pentecostals that I know, and, uh, and I know their lives and their churches and the progress that they're making, there is definite Pentecostal revival. So here's an example of that. Rialto, California, Inland Lighthouse Church, just had <laughs> an old-time tent revival, okay, with evangelist Jacob Phillips. In this tent revival, they had Friday night and Saturday night and Sunday morning. In those three services, 38 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, 36 and two at the one of the branch works, but 38 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In that same church, the Sunday before, 12 more received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and 10 have been baptized in that seven-day span. So here's 50 people, 50 new people receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and being baptized, uh, in, and a number of them being baptized in Jesus' name in seven days. So just think, if these churches keep growing like this on these levels, it's going to be a powerful, powerful thing. It already is. But now there are literally hundreds and thousands in America who are receiving the Holy Ghost. So this kind of report, Pastor Joel Booker is the pastor of Inland Lighthouse Church. He reports that this is ongoing. I have preached there in the last year or so, a time or two. And I will just tell you, Pentecostal revival is not slowing down. It's actually speeding up. Now, if you're in a Pentecostal church that's not having Pentecostal revival, there may be circumstances. It may be in a process of breaking through, and it could be other things that's not to fault anybody. Or it may be that it just needs a big, fat Holy Ghost revival to shake it up and get it going. Whatever the case, when we talk about Pentecostalism growing around the world, we do not have to look at another continent to find it. It's happening right here. And here's a report in Rialto, California of apostolic Pentecostal revival that is ongoing.